Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope everyone is doing well out there this morning and having a great start to your day, great start to your weekend. Thank you all for joining me this morning as we talk the weather over the next 24 hours. We'll even extend into our Sunday, into our Monday for certain areas of the country. Big headlines today is a lot of rain across the deep south, Texas, even a severe weather threat into Louisiana. This rain will continue to kind of make its way east and bring some heavy rain to like areas of like southern Mississippi. We're getting rain across the middle of the country. Uh, there'll be a lot of moisture just scattered about across the Rockies. And then today is like day one of uh, this powerful storm system that will begin to make its way into the central California coastline. Uh, so once we get to the western U.S. kind of timestamp of this video, uh, we will extend that portion of the video into like Sunday, Monday, even Tuesday morning and talk about the latest impacts expected from that storm system. And then after that, we will kind of re-go over this pattern change expected um, as we get into mid the middle of the month, kind of go over some model guides that we saw um, overnight into this morning and just kind of keep re-going over that information for you folks. Guys, I don't know what happened with the audio with last night's video. The, the mic was very muffled. Uh, the audio was very muffled. It sounded lower. It just didn't sound as crisp. Thank you, Karen from Montana, for mentioning it because I would have never known. Uh, so hopefully it sounds better this morning. I tested some things and it sounded like it was back to what what it's supposed to be at. So uh, not a great first impression video for anybody who tuned in for the first time and um, uh, for last night's video. So I actually kind of woke up kind of happy that the video did not do very well uh, view, view wise. <laughs> I was like, dang, if that video gets 30 to 40,000 views, um, it's not a great first impression for a lot of people. But I think we're back to the normal flow of things with this. So with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like, and if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling. A lot of moisture in East Texas, uh, even some severe thunderstorms down here in Southeast Texas. We got a lot of heavy rain that's surging pretty much and taking over most of the state of Louisiana. Even some rain starting to move into uh, Southern Arkansas. Light to moderate rain kind of slinging through Eastern Oklahoma, all the way into Kansas, all the way into Nebraska. And this kind of moist feed wrapping around this low in Texas on the South Central U.S., is bringing some higher elevation snow, even some hot, some like foothill snow south of Denver um, uh, this morning. And we're going to see how much snow Denver will get from the system. As of now, not expecting a ton, but you certainly could get some for sure as far as accumulations. And then the rest of the, you know, the Rockies, the western U.S., just kind of scattered moisture about. I mean, there's nothing really concentrated. There's nothing really widespread, just kind of scattered moisture, higher elevation snow, lower elevation rain. And then in the eastern U.S., it's pretty darn quiet. Not a whole lot going on. The only thing to mention is our friends here in Nova Scotia are getting slammed by a pretty significant winter storm. Uh, I think you just got done with kind of round one or you're right in the middle of round one. Round two will move in as we get later into tonight, into our Sunday. Feet of snow expected. Some people may maybe have already gotten several inches to a foot of snow up there. So that's what's going on right now. As far as uh, the severe um, the storm prediction center, just a marginal risk from Corpus Christi to Houston, all the way down to the swamp regions of the Bayou of Louisiana. So we will watch for a low end tornado threat in these areas as we get uh, basically throughout the morning into the afternoon hours. I think the worst of the severe weather will be out in the um, ocean out in the Gulf of Mexico. Thankfully, there's no land in this area because I do think we would have a severe weather outbreak potential on our hands. But, you know, it's looking like uh, the land regions are a little bit further north outside of the main ingredients for severe weather. Now, the excess, excessive rainfall outlook, there is a slight risk in southern Louisiana, which means you have a 15% risk of flashlight guidance being met in this area. And then there's a slight risk around San Francisco go point south along the central California coastline. Same thing, 15% risk of flash flood guidance being met. And uh, this will definitely increase as we get into our Sunday. But this is kind of the big day one of this storm system. Watches, warnings, and advisories. The greens are flood watches. Um, uh, this uh, mustard color right here up against the California coastline is high wind warning. So not only are you getting the the flooding range are getting the winds with it too. It's just going to be a very powerful Pacific storm that's going to move in today. Higher elevations have winter storm warnings. Um, the Rockies winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories for some areas where not as much snow is expected. The never ending fog continues up here for the central sections of the country. And then we got high wind warnings down here in New Mexico and Texas. The eastern U.S. is pretty quiet. Got a lot of fog you're waking up to along the west coast of Florida. 
But outside of that, uh, not a whole lot going on in the eastern U.S. Let's talk about the southeast first. Today, for the most of the southeast, it's pretty quiet. The only thing that's you know that's, that we need to mention here is this rain moving through Louisiana. The closer you are tucked up against the coastline of Louisiana and Texas, the higher your severe weather threat will be. But as you can tell, most of the severe weather is off the coastline. That's good news. Um, but you know, as we get into this afternoon, some intense storms are possible. And in fact, let's just go on and like get a little bit closer to this. And here it is. There's this heavy rain moving through Louisiana as we're getting into about midday today. Just mainly rain, but you get really close to the coastline down here. These storms could be quite intense. The ingredients could be there for a, a low end tornado threat, some damaging winds. Um, you know, once you get to Baton Rouge, New Orleans, I think it's going to be more so just some rumbles of thunder, heavy rain, but you could get some severe weather up here in this region also. And then we start to get into our evening time frame. Watch out, you know, Gulfport, Mississippi, but I really think the worst of the weather will be, you know, into the Gulf of Mexico. I really do. And this continues, starts to enter uh, southern sections of Alabama and then the panhandle of Florida. We will watch this little feed right here of moisture into the overnight hours, one, two o'clock in the morning. These storms could produce, uh, there could be some strong storms uh, moving through kind of the Baton Rouge area into the Gulfport region. And um, then we get all the way into our Sunday morning, could be wo woken up by some storms in the western panhandle of Florida. This is all just rain up here, nothing severe, just moderate rain. Uh, but rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, you know, one to two inches of rain, so we could get two and a half in inches of rain down here in southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and the rain begins to add up as we get into tomorrow for the panhandle of Florida, southern sections of Alabama. And I mean, even an, an inch or so of rain is possible up here in Jackson, central Mississippi, Arkansas, an inch, inch and a half of rain from this sharp cutoff, though, um, once we get to like areas of the mid-south. The north central U.S., nothing. Nothing going on whatsoever. Maybe some flurries get thrown back in the southeast mass this afternoon. But man, there is nothing going on up here whatsoever. It is a very quiet Saturday. Enjoy your weather. Just not much to mention. But our friends a little bit up the road here in Atlanta, Canada. I mean, we're starting it off this morning. A lot of heavy snow falling in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island. And uh, this will continue. You might mix a little bit you know, up against the coastlines of Cape Breton Island and maybe the uh, kind of the e the eastern uh, shore, southern shorelines of Nova Scotia. Some snow starts to work its way into maybe areas of uh, Newfoundland. And uh, then it tapers off and then it gets going again. And it could be really intense for Cape Breton Island like tomorrow morning. Look at these darker shades of blue. This is the latest GFS. Just continues all the way through our Monday morning. I mean, it is still snowing in certain areas all the way into our Monday evening. So how much snow is expected from this? Feet of snow. I mean, in this little area right here, you're talking about like 70 to 90, based off this run of the GFS, uh, what is it? Y'all go by centimeters of snow. I mean, that's equivalent to feet of snow up here. And it hits Newfoundland too, but it really likes the eastern sections of Nova Scotia into Cape Breton Island for the most snow with this setup especially as we get into tomorrow where you get another push of very heavy snow into this area so south uh, central u.s the severe weather threat kind of ends for the most part could get some more storms that do fire up i mean from eastern texas all the way up into central and eastern oklahoma i don't think these will be severe but we could get some small hail from this with a little cold air aloft working in um, but I don't think there'll be a big deal at all, but you'll continue just to deal with rain all day in Arkansas, southwest Missouri, eastern Oklahoma, eastern sections of uh, Kansas, and this continues, and I think some rain will begin to overspread into um, western sections of Kansas as we are waking up tomorrow morning, but you know, you're, you're going to get definitely a, a snow opportunity in Denver today. As you can tell, this is around midday. It looks like you're struggling the snow around the Denver area, but you could switch on and off. But I think as we get to the, I would say this afternoon, this evening, you could have a few hour period of some heavy wet snow that could dump some accumulations. So uh, this, talking about as far as precipitation, there's the feed of moisture. I mean, areas in like central Kansas could get an inch, inch and a quarter of rain. Same thing for, you know, eastern sections of uh, Oklahoma and then southern Nebraska. Could be quite a rainy day today. But we talk about this moisture for Colorado. You know, they're going for two to three inches of snow now around the Colorado area. So it's increased 
But, I mean, you can get over a foot, an hour or two, just south of Colorado. I'm sorry, just south of Denver, like in the Castle Rock area. And then you get up in the higher ranges of uh, southern um, Wyoming. Uh, what is that? Laramie? Lorraine, um, I probably pronounced that all wrong. Range up here definitely could get a few to several inches of snow, kind of some upslope flow kind of set up right in here. Rockies, heavy snow. Uh, definitely uh, tip my cap to uh, my guy in Kentucky. He kind of hit me up and mentioned uh, some uh, micro areas in this range um, and this area out here, but I still need to get better with my punctuation skills. <laughs> um, uh, pronouncing names is what I should say. But the now the, the north central U.S. up here, most of the area continues to be quiet. Some rain getting slung into the state of Nebraska all the way up into a southwest sections of uh, South Dakota. And uh, my cat is um, clawing at my door over here, but we're going to keep on rolling. So we keep going here. Sorry, I had to stop the video. I had to stop the video really quick because my cat sounded like a lion clawing at the door to my right. So we keep this going here. Rain continues as we get into the wee hours of the morning for our Sunday morning. For sections of Nebraska, some of this rain will ooze into South Dakota, especially southwest and western South Dakota. But, you know, for my folks in the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes region, it's it's pretty chill, pretty pretty chill Saturday on our hands, and Sunday will probably be the same way. Not a whole lot going on at all. All right, so out west, a different story. All right, higher elevation snow will be flying across the central and northern Rockies. Um, could pick up in intensity in like western Montana, um, Idaho a little bit later today. Heavy snow begins to fall in southeast and southern sections and western sections of Wyoming. And, uh, you know, could get an all-out snowstorm for sections of Wyoming a little bit later today. But you see the big feed of moisture getting pushed into California. So just want to show a broad look at first. Definitely central, western Montana snow, especially as we get later into this evening, into the overnight hours. But let's go on and zoom into our friends down here in California. This push of moisture begins to make its way in just after lunchtime for the central California coastline. Okay, and we take it all the way out until about 5 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, this evening. You see the shades of yellow, almost the shades of orange. That's very heavy rain, wind-driven rain making its way into San Francisco, especially points south, Santa Maria, Santa Barbara. And, you know, I, I really don't think for L.A., San Diego, you'll see much today. I think you got to get into the overnight hours, really into tomorrow before you see a whole lot of moisture. So you got time to kind of prepare in Los Angeles, San Diego today not very active for our Saturday. But this continues. We get into uh, deeper into this evening, like, you know, 10, 11 p.m. I mean, conditions go downhill fast in San Francisco, especially south. And I mean, but even as you get into like five, six o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, a lot of heavy moisture begins to get thrown into Northern California too. And man, there is going to be all out storm conditions, heavy wind driven rain in San Francisco, this is when things could go downhill in the city of San Francisco, Sacramento. I mean, even the valley regions um, in central California, heavy, heavy rain, high winds expected. And this continues. Look at the higher elevation snow flying in the Sierra Nevada. And then this begins to pinwheel around this low. And this is when I think this begins to move into Los Angeles, San Diego, as we start to get into our Sunday. Uh, really our Sunday afternoon and as you can tell we start to get a feed and we can go on and switch it to the NAM so we can go a little bit a little bit further out with this and here it is you know the feed of moisture gets kind of pushed into Southern California down here so definitely it goes downhill I would say more so later in the Sunday uh, tomorrow um, just I would just be aware all day tomorrow for Southern California for sure into our Monday morning. But I think the worst of the impacts is going to be along the Central California coastline for sure. So um, as far as rainfall, zoomed into California, San Francisco, you know, you guys could get two, three, maybe three and a half inches of rain. You get down south along the Central Cali coastline down here, Central California coastline. Somebody from California said they don't like when people say call it Cali. Uh, so I'll just say California. <laughs> so several inches of uh, rain uh, expected along the California coastline. And uh, definitely, this I think this area right in here is going to see the worst of the impacts right into here. I think that'll be the worst of the impacts as far as when you mix the heavy rain with the high winds. But, you know, you, you move a little bit further down the coastline here. 
This is between, it looks like we're only going 30 hours out. We need to go a little bit further out. So this goes all the way out to Tuesday morning. Inch, inch and a half of rain now expect, expected for San Diego. But you go up to L.A., you know, four, five, six inches of rain. You go up a little bit up the road, up the shorelines. I mean, we're talking about six, seven inches of rain in some of these pockets. Some of this could be snow in some of these higher peaks in Southern California, too. You know, I don't I don't want to forget about that. That's, you know, snowfall. Look at these higher elevations could get several inches over a foot of snow in these kind of southern uh, higher peak regions here in Southern California. Uh, and speaking a little bit more on snow, there's a look at the Sierra Nevada. A lot, a lot of heavy snow expected feet of snow. I mean, we're talking about four, five, six feet of snow in certain areas and talking about the winds. You know, San Francisco is going to be good for a 50, 60, maybe 65 mile per hour wind gust between now and the entire duration of the storm. You go a little bit further south, someone could get a 70 to 75 mile per hour wind gust. And, you know, you look down here in this area, right, right into here. This is where someone could get maybe an 80, 90, maybe 100 mile per hour wind gust in these higher mountain ranges right into here and kind of the south central coastlines and, and regions of California. And, you go a little bit further south and take a look at this. This is between now and let's go all the way out to Tuesday. That's about Monday evening. And yeah, I mean, LA could get a wind gust pushing 35 to 45 miles per hour in these areas. But man, it really picks up, up the, up the coastline, just off the coastline right here in these higher elevations here in uh, Southern California for sure. A couple little... Um, images that the National Weather Service in some of these areas in, in, in California are showing us. But, you know, they're going for five, five and a half inches of rain in L.A. between now and the duration of this event. It says high risk for life threatening and damaging flooding, folks. This is a big deal. But it does show some individual towns and communities here in this region. I mean, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's going for nine inches of rain. Crazy. Northern California, this is what it's looking like as far as winds. It, it's probably pretty hard to see on your screen, but, you know, San Fran going for 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. It was San Jose, 50 to 55 miles per hour. Um, so definitely some high winds up in, into the central and northern sections of California, too. And then National Weather Service out of Hanford. I mean, a lot of rain in the valley sections. And then look at the snow. Probably kind of hard to see on your screen, but, you know, it's all elevation driven, of course, just like it always is. So, you know, it's pretty wild in these areas. You know, Yosemite Valley, four to six inches of snow, but you also could get four to six inches of rain. <laughs> so it's it's just elevation driven. You got to be on up there and you get too far up there. You're going to get into an all out blizzard type condition. So temperatures uh, today, uh, warmer than average temperatures, basically, for the most part. And a little bit cooler in the Great Lakes region. Some areas will struggle to get above freezing. A little bit cooler in the Northeast, too. Uh, definitely a chilly day from New York City to Boston. Even a chilly day around Baltimore, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. Highs just in the 40s, but, you know, it's winter. You know, it's not, you know, that's not unexpected or anything like that. Warmer temperatures ahead of this rain in the Deep South, 60s. Somebody will get into the low 70s between the Deep South and um, Florida. A little bit cooler, a little wedge of cooler air in the Carolinas will keep most of everybody in the 50s, low 60s. And then you go out west, it's going to start to cool down in California because this moisture is going to move in. But most people out west are around average to slightly above average temperature-wise still, for sure. Not quite as warm as we've seen over the last several days this past week, but yeah. A uh, severe weather threat for Florida tomorrow is definitely there, and they have issued a slight risk, a level two out of five risk of severe weather for like Miami and the southern tip of Florida. This is driven off a tornado threat. You got a 5% risk of a tornado for the southern tip of Florida within 25 miles in a given location in the brown area. So, you know, they've increased the tornado threat down here, folks. And the hell threat, just a 5% risk of, of hell. I'm sorry, a, a two... Uh, let's get this right. Let's speak right. 5% risk of hell, kind of in central and north central Florida. And then the wind threat with this, just just a 5% risk of, of, of damaging winds. Um, so it's not a huge threat. It's the tornado threat that we need to worry about for tomorrow. And we kind of look at, at the H-Triple-R model, what it shows. We'll, we'll kickstart it kind of Sunday morning. We're already getting rain pushing in from the Gulf of Mexico into the west coast of Florida. But you see this kind of line of storms making its way right towards the southern tip of Florida. Here it is. I mean, I would watch out like in the Florida Keys. I really think we're going to have some nasty weather tomorrow morning, early tomorrow afternoon in the Florida Keys up to Miami, 
the extreme southern sections of Florida. These little storms right in here, and they're not little, they're going to be large. These will be some intense storms. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised one bit we get some ports of some water spouts and tornado and, and storms that are capable of producing tornadoes. And then this continues to clear out. And the big question is, is there going to be anything that gets going after this for Sunday afternoon? You know, we're getting into Sunday afternoon. There's some additional storms to get going sun tomorrow evening and start to begin to push into the west coast of florida we need to watch these two but you know the question is does the atmosphere have time to recover from the morning convection but there will be some additional storms that push into tampa bay fort myers uh you know, surrounding sections tomorrow evening in this area so uh, but i really think the morning stuff is going to be the stuff we need to watch out for down here for sure when we look at the updraft felicity swath the worst of it's out in the ocean thankfully, but, you know, the Florida Keys need to watch out. Could have a, could have some scenarios where some water spouts are moving on shore. Let's, let's hope that's not the case. But, um, yeah, please be a weather aware um, tomorrow morning in uh, the southern sections of Florida for sure. And then, guys, we look at the pattern change coming up. You know, not a whole lot's changed, folks, and, you know, we're actually just going to kind of bump this to the 06Z. Um, we talked about this in last night's uh, video. We're going to have a ridge that dominates the central and especially eastern section of the country next week, all the way into next weekend. This is going to bring well above average. And this is indicated by all the reds you see on your screen that indicates above average temperatures, ridging in place. The blues you see on your screen, that's lower pressure, storminess, coolness typically associated with that not always not and we talked about that over the last few videos that just because you have a big blue blob on your screen it doesn't necessarily mean that you you know you know have extremely cold air um, but you continue to keep this in, in place and you see this ridge over the eastern u.s this kind of warmer colors as you're seeing that's going to bring above average temperatures and this continues but as we get about a week to about 10 days out this area in blue, which indicates lower pressure, is going to shift across the middle of the country and almost connect right into here. To, to me, this tells me that we're going to have some sort of storm system, multiple storm systems, I think, as this pattern sort of gets into place in this area. And, you know, as we continue to make our way into about the 11, 12, 13 day time frame, we got this tall ridge uh, getting even taller over sections of uh, the western U.S., western Canada, and then it's building all the way up to Alaska. So a little bit of a negative EPO. It's not a strong negative EPO. You need intense ridging over Alaska for this to be a strongly phased uh, negative EPO. But in this case, you still got ridging building up into this region, lower pressure over the eastern U.S., and then you see this area of blue starting to show up over the Pacific, starting to attach down here to the south central U.S. To me, what I'm seeing right here, and we're kind of far out, mid-month, I'm going to take it on out to right here. To me, I think at this point, we've already had a storm system or two, um, maybe the second one bringing winter weather for certain areas of the eastern U.S. But to me, it's this time frame I'm watching. Tall Ridge up here, this is dislodging cold air down here behind this well, down here, up here behind this uh, jet that's digging down into here somewhere. Uh, cold air pumping down. You're probably going to have pieces of energy sort of shooting down from the northern stream. And you see the lower pressure down here. This is indicating that we're going to have an active a southern jet that's going to get going. So if you're thinking, what does an active southern jet mean? Uh, what does it mean? It means that you're going to have a lot of energy down here to the south that is going to have the potential to feed, okay, X being the energy, feed into this cold air diving down uh, from the northern sections of the northern hemisphere. So what is, what, I mean, what does that mean? That means that you could have a, a chance in the southeast and the mid-Atlantic for winter weather once we get deeper into February. Um, it definitely lines up. This is your classic watch for some sort of storm system down here that gets going, moves into this cold air, getting you know pushed down, dislodged down from this ridging up here in the western sections of the U.S. and up here into Canada, up here to Alaska. And then this is when we could get magic to happen in this area. So there's a explanation on it for about the 85th time. And we'll continue to you know pump out information on that for you folks who are new time viewers. Uh, but there is the above average temperatures that will dominate late next week into next weekend. But as we move, you know, as we come on, work for me here. 
Okay, I guess it's not. But as we move into the later portion of the time frame, by about mid-month, you begin to see those above average temperatures sort of kind of dwindle away, and then it's replaced with those below average temperatures. So it's something we need to watch, and uh, I think that it's likely going to happen. And I think that we're going to initiate this pattern by a storm system, the same system that's likely impact, going to impact California, will cruise across the Rockies, and this will likely become a somewhat powerful storm system for the northern section of the lower 48, the northern plains, the Dakotas, and there it is, indicated by the more whiter colors, the bluer colors. This is a strong signal off the European Ensemble for a low pressure cutting very far north. This will be way too warm for rain, for snow, even for areas of like the Great Lakes region, the Midwest. This will cut across, move into Canada. And then one thing you'll note right here, there's this little concentrated area, more bluer, that you're showing on your screen. That is another signal for a low pressure to kind of cut across the country, but, a, but cut a little bit further south. And I still think this storm signal is going to be warmer. It'll be colder than the first one, but I still don't think enough cold air has moved in place yet. But I do think this could bring some sort of impact for the Ohio Valley, the interior northeast, and it will bring weather to the south too on the southern flank of it. And then what happens after that, you know, we don't know. You know, we, we really don't. We got to figure it out. The, the signal is a lot more muted that far out. And, you know, the latest operational runs really show the evolution of this. You know, here comes a low pressure shooting across the northern sections of the country. Midway next week, you see the 998 low, and it's showing up well on the models. Shoots across, moves through, and then here comes the next system that's cutting a little bit further south. 993 low, the end of next weekend, pretty far out, not a forecast, but it's still a warm system. All right, and then it looks like more cold air is kind of oozing down behind it. And it's the same thing with the GFS, folks. You know, there's that storm system midway next mid, midway next week, mid to late next week, and then this kind of cruises on off, and then the signal is a little bit more everywhere on the second signal um, for a storm system, but it's it's there. And then look at all the cold air that starts to move down. Look at this low, very close to doing something there, and in fact, it does brings. And this isn't this isn't a forecast, but this shows you the idea of this pattern change. We get about mid month, and uh, there's snow showing up along the east coast, snow all the way down to the southeast, and then looks like a big storm's about to come. Then it gets squashed from this high pressure, you know. So it just shows. Look at the snow in southern South Carolina at the very end of the last night's GFS run. It, <coughs> excuse me, it shows the potential with this pattern coming up. So stay tuned. We'll continue to feed you guys information on this. That's all I got. God bless all y'all, and have a great Saturday.